All right, so last time we got the frog, so he was hopping back and forth, moving to the left, moving to the right. He is now alive and well. Thing is, he is not doing every, for one thing, he has no animations at all. And the second thing is, we actually want him to idle when he's turning around. So we want him to pause for a moment, idle, and then go on and do something. We might even want him to idle in between each jump. I don't know yet, but we can go ahead and make this happen. It's going to be awesome. So let's get this started. So right now, he's basically jumping no matter what, if he's if all this criteria is met, if he's on that ground, right? It's only a matter of whether he's facing left or right. So first off, we're gonna right click, we're gonna highlight everything, we're gonna right click, we're gonna go quick actions refactoring, we're gonna extract the method. Right, now we get to name it. We're gonna name this move, right? So now we have this all into one little function and we can move him as, uh, simply by saying move inside of update right he'll do all everything that we programmed earlier inside of there now this is really handy because we might not necessarily want him to move if he is idling right so we're going to do this in actually a bit of a different way we're actually not going to call move in here at all we're going to leave the function of course but we're not going to call it inside of there all right why are we doing this well because we want something else to call out the move we want something else to do that so we're going to set up an idle animation on our creature, and I'm going to show you about animation events. It's going to be awesome. If you go into the frog, we're going to set up an animation uh, complete from the start. Uh, you'll see that there's an idle animation inside the frog already. I want you to set it up so that he is naturally doing that idle animation. All right. So if you go over here to Sunnyland, you go to artwork, you go to sprites, you go to enemies, <laughs> you go to frog, you go idle, and then you can just right click, you hit create, you go to animation, and you go to frog, you can name it whatever you want, but I'm going to name my frog.idle, underscore idle, and then we're going to drag this over to the froggy. We're going to select the frog so things aren't so confusing, and it's frog underscore idle, that is perfect. And we're going to go and select him. We're going to go to window, animation, animation. We're going to select the frog. It's going to so show frog underscore idle. Drag these all over, space them out correctly. Take the last one, put it on the last thing right there. We're going to select all these, change them to 16. They're already 16. Oh, because we did it earlier. And we're going to play it just to test it out looks pretty good i might want it to be a tad bit slower we can do that inside the animator and do this at the speed of 0.75 let's say we're not using that animation or something like that so of course we don't have it on loop which is a problem so where's loop the idle take this off i right, hit loop time and then we're gonna play it and we're gonna take a look is that about the right speed i don't know I'm going to go back into here and hit this so that we can mess with the speed a bit. That's way slow in comparison, but I think I want it to be about 0.5 then maybe. That looks about right to me. So 0.5, that'll stay the same because it's inside the animator. And now we have that running right. He's still moving for some reason. He shouldn't be moving. Is this saved? There you go, now he's not moving. Okay, I must have forgot to hit control S earlier. Okay, so now our frog is sitting still and he's idling right there, that's really cool. So now, and you actually can go back into the animation window. You go window, animation, you can mess with this here. You select the frog and we're gonna do something, frog, and we're gonna do an animation event. It's gonna be really cool. So you see right here, you can add an event, right? We're gonna move this around, there it goes. Huh, it's gonna be a really hard time. You should just be able to left click and drag it. Um, we're gonna run the event about right here. So basically once it ends, we're gonna go like this and we're gonna select move. You see there? 
if you look over here on the right side, you can literally go into the function and hit move. If you made other functions, you can you can do that right as well because it literally just looks through your uh, character scripts, not just the frog one, but all the scripts and sees the things that you can run. And of course, update and start don't count, but like anything that we would have made, I can make a private void poppin. I guess poppin's a good name. And I can of course, and then I can go over to animation. I'm just refreshing it right now, basically by opening this up. We select frog, click on the event right here, which right now is set up to move, and poppins there. See, I just want to show you that it's literally that's all there's to it. It's just pretty amazing. Um, so you can run things from there, and so at the so what's happening here theoretically is you're running this entire animation at the end of the animation he's going okay i should see if i can move now basically right so let's go ahead and see what's going on so every time he idles he'll actually uh he'll idle then jump idle then jump so if we go into the scene view now we have a bit of a problem here because while he's uh jumping uh while he's jumping he's still idling because of the way that the animator works so what we actually need is we need a jump animation as well. I'm going to challenge you to go ahead and make the uh, jump animation, get into the animator, and see what you can do. All right. So if you go to frog, you go to jump, and you can go to create animation as soon as I find it. And then you're going to go frog underscore jump. And of course, we're gonna actually make another animation. Surprise! <laughs> of uh, frog underscore uh, fall. Because we want this animation right here to be played at a different time as the other one. So we're gonna drag both of these over to the froggy. And by the way, we can delete these now because we don't no longer need them. Uh, and now, if we go into the animator, we have frog fall, frog jump. All right? Good. And then, of course, we go to window, and we're going to go to animation, and we select the frog, we hit the fall, and then we put the fall animation onto there, or in other words, jump number two, and then jump number one, we're going to put on the jump animation. Oh, jump number one. Okay. <laughs> What's that? Okay. And so now it's, it should, uh, all the animations be, should be set correctly. Of course, we can test it right inside the scene by hitting the play button here. And we can do it by hitting the play button here. So it looks good. I know that you might not be able to see that, but I could see that I could verify it myself. Then we're going to, of course, set up the pixels to be correct. And we should be good to go. Oh, and I should probably say 16 pixels per unit, guys, what this whole tile set, characters, everything uses, in case you do not remember. Okay, so now this uh, frog is set up correctly to have these animations on them, but he has no way of knowing when he's jumping and falling, right? So theoretically, we should be doing something along the lines of this, and then this, and then this right that's how it's going to transition if we're instead of an idle animation it'll go over to the jump if we're inside the jump it'll go over to the fall and if we're in the fall we'll go back to idle so we're going to take this off do zero and then i think that you should do the other two yourself real quick it's just a little micro challenge the reason why i'm having you do it yourself is just so it stays fresh in your mind and so that's all set up now. And now the question is, when should we be jumping, falling, and blah, blah, blahing, right? We're gonna hit a Boolean, and it's gonna be jumping. And then we're gonna do another Boolean. Remember that you're capitalizing them, or not capitalizing them if you want, but if you are capitalizing or not capitalizing, you gotta remember which one you're doing so you can put it correctly inside the, the script. We're gonna say jumping, falling, right? So, if jumping is false and falling is false, then we can go over there, right? If, help if I can scroll down, if jumping is true, then we automatically do jumping, and if jumping 
You know what? We could probably just do jump against faults, maybe? No, that wouldn't work. So if uh, falling is true, then we go over there, right? So the question is how are we going to set up these uh, variables inside of here, right? So we know that when you're moving, because it happens at the end of the idle animation, we know because like at the end of the idle animation, he automatically goes into the jump, right? And he does the move, right? So at this point, while moving, we actually got to think where on the script it's actually happening at. So there's only two spots where you jump. It's right here and right here. So in both those spots, you want the same kind of, same line to be running. You want to say, um, well, actually, you got to have an animator first. So as a, as a uh, challenge, why don't you go ahead and add an animator variable to this? All right, so animator, we're going to go private animator. Make sure it's the er, not the animation or anything like that. Anim. And then, of course, we're going to go to our start function. We're going to go anim equals get component. Animator, not shin, or. And we're going to go ahead and. What was that? Uh, we're going to go ahead and fix that up. We're going to go over here now. We can go ahead and do this. We're going to go anim dot. You know what? Why don't you try to do it? So you've known how to do it before. You know that you used the word set. Or now you know if you didn't, you didn't remember. So why don't you go ahead and see there if you can set whatever we use to do this. All right. Anim dot set. You look through these. You know, notice that we used a Boolean. You're going to set the boolean and then it'll tell you int id remember we don't normally use the int id because we don't know what the int id is for the most part there are ways to find it but we don't have it and we're gonna, it's much easier just to use a string name although less efficient code wise but you're probably never going to run into that problem with a 2d game uh we're going to set the boolean and of uh jumping to true and we can just copy this line right here. We can go over here, do the same thing, right? Well, first off, let's see if that works. And then we'll work on falling. So look at the scene. And as you can see, we got jumping to work here. Problem, there's two main problems here. One, he is never getting to the point where he's idling again because right now he's the idle animation is never running so he's never actually jumping anymore because he he never idles then has that animation event goes off two he's never leaving this so we need to work on two things we need to transition from jump to fall and we need to transition from fall to idle so the way that we can check is, you might not even know this, is you can actually get the boolean that we use inside the as a parameter in the animation. So if you go anim.get bool, you can actually do the same thing. You can of course pull it up with the string name, which in this case is jumping. Oh, what am I doing? It's not supposed to have a semicolon. <laughs> And so if this Boolean is true, basically, so if it comes back true, if we're actually in the jumping animation, then we're going to want to check if the, well, I want you to try to figure it out, actually. How do we do this with the player? How do we start to figure out if we're falling? Go ahead and try it. All right. It's uh, actually just the velocity again. So if rb.velocity.y and it's, this number is a negative number, so we want to do basically minus 0.1. <laughs> then we're going to go anim.setpool falling to true. Right? And we're also going to set, let's go anim.setpool jumping to, it's, it's a it's a call on your side and it's up to you guys, but I don't know. I'm gonna set the fault. All right, so if he's jumping, then you're gonna do those things, right? You're gonna basically find out if he's if he's falling, which is what happens when your velocity, your y velocity is 
lower lower than zero and basically we're gonna catch it right before he hits zero so because of the rate that the game updates at so it's just gonna like you know when he hits point one when he's like just barely moving up and about to start falling is when he'll start to look like he's falling it's it's about the right timing in my opinion you can change it if you don't like it of course okay Changes from jump to fall. So we did that correctly. Now we want to transition from fall to idle. Let's see if you guys can figure that one out. Fall to idle is pretty simple. If pole is touching layers, ground, then we know that we need to go back to idle. So we're going to say anim dot. Oh, and we also want this to be and we want to put an extra thing on here and um anim .get bool. this has to be happening when uh when we're falling right so if we're falling and and we're uh touching the ground layer then anim.set bool falling to faults and now with both of those faults it'll automatically switch us to the idle animation. All right, we're gonna go in here, we we'll check out on our enemy. You see he idles, idles, jumps, idles, jumps, idles, jumps. Now why is he doing the two idles when he's turning around? Well, if you go into your script right here, you see that you're actually not setting the Boolean to jumping until we actually are all the way turned around and doing all that stuff. So like, unless he actually jumps, we're not actually setting the jump animation to happen. So, so that's why he's not actually like, he's actually getting two idols off in those situations because the move isn't actually doing anything for that moment right there. Uh, we could fix it if we want to, but I kind of like the two idols on that side, on each one of the sides. So I'm gonna leave it because it adds a little bit more character. So we run the game, want to actually see it all in action. We've gotten to the point now where we can do animation events. That is a whole nother level right there. You can do all sorts of things through animation events. See that the frog is doing his idle, then he's jumping. I almost want him to get through like the animation a bit better. So I think I'm going to add like, like him at the end there a little bit. So I'm actually going to mess with my animation just to make him look a little bit better. So I'm going to go to window, animation animation but you definitely do not need to do this uh this is just me being picky we're gonna go over to here check him out real fast you know what the problem is it's going down a little bit too quickly maybe no that's about right because they have it so this uh one's bigger than this one right here so, I think I like it now. Let's go take a look at him, see if he pauses long enough in between each jump for me. Ah, still not good. Almost want to stay longer. So let's go back to the frog. This type of thing you just gotta do. Like this is definitely the test one. You guys definitely don't have to watch this part, but I'm just showing you guys my process here. Because it's, it's useful. So we're gonna make this longer right here. We're gonna put maybe another one in there. And then we're gonna go over to that. And so we'll play it. It's definitely a little bit longer now. I basically doubled the length of that idle animation at the end. That there's some sand still. So we're gonna see it. Whoa, there we go. So he kind of sits still for a second after he breathes. That's kind of good. Yeah, I like it a lot better. I feel like it feels a lot better. Let's jump on his head real quick. Woo! All done, guys. All right. So. We learned how to do animation events. We learned how to make a quick little simple AI. We got we got a game running here at this point, guys. So I'm glad that we did it. Please hit that thumbs up if you liked the video. Please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you can get all my updates. And uh, please continue to leave me comments and uh, notes below so that I can continue to improve my craft. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. I hope to see you next time. Have a good day.